The atmosphere of the dryer can be checked while the stretcher is being prepared to do the rescue. The first thing you do is remove the stiff neck cervical collar from the backpack and put it into the dryer. Prepare the stretcher by removing the spine splint and pass it into the dryer. Remove the stretcher from the backpack, unroll it, and reverse roll it. This is done by standing on the foot end. Roll the stretcher to full length and fold the head end back and reverse roll it over your arm. The same thing is done on the foot side. This will prevent the stretcher from curling up on you when you are working with it inside the dryer. You then roll the stretcher lengthwise so you can pass it to the persons assisting you in the rescue inside the dryer. Note, this dryer hole is 11 by 15 inches. One person will completely support the neck and head at all times when applying the cervical collar and spine splint. Once again, we log roll the patient using the same method as before. On the count of three, everybody moves together. The stretcher is moved as close to the patient as possible. Then the patient is rolled back gently on the count of three. Considering the lack of space in the dryer, you must work from one side of the dryer. Very carefully lift the stretcher so the patient slides to the center of the stretcher without jarring the spine. Once the patient is in the center, you may begin fastening straps. Make sure to watch the patient as you fasten the straps in case your patient becomes violent and kicks. The stretcher will act as a shield when you work from the sides. Pull the straps as snugly as possible without restricting breathing. Notice the arms are extended above the head. This will allow easy passage through the dryer opening. The straps at the foot end are attached at this time. This will bring the foot end of the stretcher up into a toboggan shape. Depending upon the size of the entry, the feet can be put in several different positions. Because the dryer entrance is so small, the feet must be crossed. The stretcher is then lifted and passed through the hole in the dryer. If the hole in the dryer is angled, the stretcher should be parallel to the walls of the hole, not parallel to the ground. Otherwise, the patient's nose could impact the dryer and cause an injury. There is very little space, so make sure the stretcher aligns with the walls of the hole. The patient is brought through the dryer opening. The patient is then prepared for transport to a medical facility. The head stretcher rolls up and fits into a backpack which is 8 inches in diameter and 3 feet long and is secured with a strap fastened around its middle. It should always be stored in the pack with a strap around its middle to prevent it from unrolling and making it difficult to remove it from the bag. 
you now see the toe strap. The clips on the toe strap can break at about 300 pounds, so we do not lift anyone off the ground with this strap. It is strictly for towing. The size of the backpack is 8 inches in diameter and 3 feet long. One pouch is large enough to hold all accessories. The other pouch can remain empty or be used to hold a first aid kit or other necessary equipment. Two D-rings on the back can be used to send the pack down a line across a canyon or between two buildings. The backpack cannot twist up on the line due to the positions of these D-rings. The D-rings also create tie-in points if you are attaching to an existing backpack. The bottom D-ring can attach to the toe strap to drag the stretcher with the victim in it. This allows your hands to remain free. Four extra handles come with the stretcher and can be placed in any of the unused grommets, allowing the stretcher to be lifted by more than four persons. The stretcher already has four handles sewn on. The stretcher contains two lift slings or straps. One is seven feet long, one is six feet six inches long. The shorter sling is labeled plainly head strap, which when in place allows the stretcher to be hoisted in a horizontal position, but slightly head up, which is a very desirable position to lift the patient. The vertical lift sling is a 30-foot section of 3 8 inch static kern mantle rope, which is inserted in all the grommets to create the sling. We tie a figure eight knot in the rope at the factory, which need never be removed. There is a large steel D-shaped locking carabiner provided. It is a large carabiner with a large gate opening and is designed to clip into all the lift sling loops or the rope. The nut screws downward, so vibration will not shake the nut loops, allowing the carabiner to open. Breaking strength of the carabiner is 9,000 pounds. stretcher. Take out the stiff neck collar. Remove the spine splint, then step on the bottom of the backpack and pull the stretcher out of the bag. Disconnect the retainer strap on the stretcher has a memory. It will want to roll up. Reverse roll it by standing on the foot of the stretcher and roll it back with one arm. Do the foot in the same way. The stretcher will then lay flat. Log roll the patient once again and pull the splint as close as possible to the patient. On the count of three, lower the patient as gently as possible. Move to the other side of the patient and move them gently to the center of the stretcher. Then apply the shoulder board, which will prevent the spine splint from compressing the spine. The top of the board should line up with the top of the patient's shoulders. Start at the bottom of the stretcher when fastening the straps and watch for kicking from a violent patient. Tighten the straps as snug as possible to create a tubular shape, which gives the stretcher its rigidity. Tuck all the strap ends into the stretcher so you do not trip on them during transport.